I want to pose a question to you. Will there come a day when our favorite Japanese seiyuu, despite the fact of them only speaking Japanese, will actually dub our language of choice? Me personally, I think it's right around the corner. And it's all thanks to those nasty deep fakes and AI generated content that we're seeing all over the place right now. Honestly, for far too many centuries, cultures have been divided by the lack of communication, not just due to language differences, but also expression itself being lost in translation. But thanks to technology, those barriers are slowly, slowly being broken. Not only has translation improved to the point of converting word to word, but also properly converting meaning of phrases and emotion. As a longtime anime fan, seeing these barriers being broken excites me. For far too long, relying on sources and translators to translate things was horrible. And making any meaningful connection with somebody of another language required an interpreter. Instead, using technologies available, making that verbal contact with others is far more easier, even if it's not perfect. And honestly, why I'm bringing all this up and what kind of sparks my interest in this particular subject is the recent conversations happening around how AI itself is changing anime. Namely, using AI in order to generate auto rotoscoping and taking live feed and creating an anime from it rather than somebody drawing frame by frame. Again, using AI to generate instead. And how that advancement in AI and technologies and machine learning could actually apply to translations as well. And not only translations, but dubs. Recently, I watched a few presentations from Japan, specifically Aniplex Fest, and they were utilizing AI translations. You could sort of see the subtitles as it's going along and every now and then the sentence structure will adjust. And that's usually a good sign that there's some technology there that's trying to rearrange stuff so that it makes sense in another language. Because yes, at least between Japanese and English, the sentence structure is a little bit different. I learned this a lot when I was learning Spanish and how Spanish kind of introduces an object before explaining the object, whereas English explains what the object looks like before you even find out what the object is. The gigantic blue flaming dog versus the dog that is flaming and gigantic. English is dumb. I fully acknowledge that English is dumb, which is sucks that it's become such the major language in the world. But that aside, that, that aside, while not perfect, it had me thinking about the possibility of a future using this in a faster way and a less interpreted way to translate anime. And honestly, it sort of got me excited especially for the aspect of dubs. I know this may come to a shock to some people because I was pretty critical when it came to the whole idea of AI itself butting its little head into animation. I love animation and its interpretation of somebody's creative style and artistic style. And the thought of an AI generating some sort of animation, utilizing somebody else's work, it doesn't really feel like it's gonna have much life breathe into it. But stick with me, I'll get into why I'm okay with this in translations later. Let me be perfectly clear. It's not that I want to see translators lose their jobs. Unfortunately, this is a thing throughout history where things get easier and more automated and unfortunately people lose their jobs because of it. But in the end, I still think there's a necessity for translators despite my logic here in thinking that AI can change translation. More so I think this technology could possibly aid in their work, make it simpler. But let's start off with subtitles specifically, where you still have a Japanese show, Japanese language, but the subtitles are in your chosen language. I almost feel as if companies treat subtitles a little differently than you would an actual dub. There seems to be an ongoing attempt to keep it as close to the original context as possible. Let's be honest, when a translator gets a little bit too creative with their subtitling, people let them know. Every now and then you'll get a translator that says they know what's best and they let their creative side change things and change context of a scene. And the fans will let them know, knock it off. <laughs> I think the reason for this is that most subtitle fans are kind of purists, but also because like myself, they know a little bit of Japanese and they know when something is being said and the subtitles not matching it. And I sort of understand the perspective of the translator wanting to make sense in the context of an overseas fan. There's okay examples of this and there's bad examples of this. Let's start with a bad example. Recently, Onimai kind of stirred up a little bit of controversy. When the translator themselves came out and openly admit that when they were translating Onimai, they interpreted the translation as, what would I say in this situation as a gamer? I hate it. Changing the character to talk like them. That should never be the case in a translation. You're translating the character, 
not speaking your own words. A great example of interpretation for it to sort of make sense overseas is a recent case in Inspector. When the character Kotoko references a Subo Arai, don't look that up unless you're ready for it. It's not safe for work. It's extremely not safe for work. It makes sense to the scene itself. She's blatantly saying something that's kind of vulgar, but most people in the room might not even understand what she's saying. So it's sort of hidden in this darker side. You don't know unless you know. But this doesn't translate because we don't have the example of pot washing. So the translator, instead of confusing the viewer, decides to make it very literal. Her saying that she wants to wash his hand inside of her hoo-hoo. And that's where, again, it makes sense to the viewer, but it doesn't make sense to the scene because she's being very vulgar with her words and everybody in the room would understand what she's saying. Although she's not supposedly saying something that the people in the room would know. The translator is taking the initiative to interpret it in a way that it's more clear. And it's a very gray area. Then there's the worst examples where the translators themselves are just trying to make their own funny. They're trying to be comedians essentially, putting their own humor into it because they think they're the funniest person in the world. You have phrases like sus, poggers, gamergate references, references to the patriarchy, no cap, things that put characters into humor that doesn't match the character and put humor and context into the show that doesn't exist in the original context. And honestly, it dates it. Nobody wants Twitch language inside of their show. I would argue that a majority of people don't even know what Twitch humor is. And don't get me started whenever they utilize other languages for humor's sake. How many times So Much Better So What had Spanish in the English subtitles? It's English subtitles, but there's Spanish in it, so I have to translate it again. Why I bring this all up is because due to cultural differences, translators choose to handle it in different ways. Some retain as much as possible to the original context while trying to make it make sense, while others choose to be creative and let their humor and creativity take over the character, change the character. Which is why, unfortunately, I'm at the breaking point where I don't mind if they take that job away from a lot of these people. That's the sad thing. And that's not to me to say that there's not good translators out there. It's just that it's more open seemingly for people to put things in there that shouldn't belong in there. We have too much of a gatekeeper mentality from a lot of translators. They feel like they're doing the fans a favor and their interpretation of the scene is a blessing that they're bestowing upon the viewers. They get like a Hollywood mentality in their heads. I want AI to sort of take over a lot of the translation and to keep it consistent and close to the original as possible. Now, I don't think it'll be perfect at first, as teaching a computer slang and colloquialisms, jokes, references, and all that kind of stuff is difficult. So I still think there's a necessity for somebody to be there that knows the context of what's being translated and can adjust it. But I do believe there will become a time where a system can pick up on dialogue and spit out subtitles that can match to the show itself. We're already seeing that with subtitles during live events that are being generated on the spot. Now, how does this apply to dubs and my original stinger from the beginning of the video? This is where things get really, really exciting. Using that translation and then applying it to vocals, essentially auto-generating dubs. Because dang, if the dub industry itself is not falling apart at the seams, it's rampant with interpretation, inserting political ideologies, controversies around the actors themselves, they're constantly at each other's throats, grooming and all this other crap that's coming out. It is just not a healthy industry, in my opinion. It's not to say that every dub actor is terrible. Just saying there's a lot of controversies in there. And it's honestly the area where we see the most of the injection of beliefs into it. Again, the patriarchy comment, the Gamergate thing. Taking somebody else's artwork from Japan and putting your own beliefs into it, changing what the character's saying in order to match your ideals. It should be an immediate fireball offense, but it keeps happening. I sometimes imagine this room full of ADRs and voice actors all sitting around wondering how they can change the character to match their own ideals. Well, the remedy for that is to remove them from the picture. Recently, technology of AI and deep fakes has made it to where you can take audio from people and make them say whatever you want. Look online, you can find a political speaker saying anything and everything. Shoot, there's even one with the last three presidents playing Call of Duty, and it sounds really good. I guess you could thank Vocaloid partly for that. But it's sort of the same idea. Taking a voice actor and sort of creating a voice bank out of them, and then using that voice bank to make them say whatever you want them to say. Put the inflections and everything in there to make it sound natural. It's still a work in progress, but it's getting better and better by the day. It's only a matter of time before you can take a Seiyu's voice, input it into a translation, and suddenly 
Your dub is fully voiced by Aoyuki. It's fully voiced by Kendra Suda. And they have inflections in there, they have emotion in there and everything. Even though the voice actor themselves can only speak Japanese, taking all of their spoken word and putting it through this generator, you can essentially dub an anime in English with their voice. And I think it's only a matter of time. The only question mark is if the companies themselves want to utilize that technology. And yes, would they want to pay Aoyuki for her likeness in her voice in the show? And I think it can happen. And it excites me like crazy. While I love Japanese, I would love to watch a show with Aoyuki speaking in English. If it's good enough, if they get to the point where it no longer sounds robotic, they no longer have those abrupt cuts, they're able to get emotion into the voices themselves, it would be something I would crave. I would love that. Finally being able to enjoy the visuals of a show without having to watch the subtitles while still having my favorite seiyus and not English dub actors would be incredible. And I'd love the idea that not only would they get paid for their work in Japan, but they would be paid for it in the West as well. One of the biggest problems, and this is gonna get into a big dub versus sub conversation here, is one of the biggest problems that I've always had with English dubbing is that I don't ever feel the spirit in it. There's cases where it works out. I've, I've listened to plenty of dubs where it sounds really good. The characters, the emotion, everything's in there. But for the most part, I feel like in Japan, they treat voicing a little differently. In the West, our stars are Hollywood actors. In Japan, their stars are seiyus. It's not just a side gig where they're trying to make some money on the side in Japan. It is their life. It is the thing they form and they build and they focus on. Unfortunately, the pain in the West in the celebration of voice actors isn't that huge. So it's not something that could be a full-time job. And so the passion between the two of them is a little bit different. I could see that possibly because of that, it'll be more expensive to utilize the voice of Aoyuki through a generation, but it'll probably be cheaper because again, it's a voice bank that's being generated. It's not the Seiyu's time that's being invested. It's sort of just a license to use the voice. But obviously the thing that's going to take time to perfect is going to be how you can take that voice bank and essentially give it emotion. That performance that the Seiyu themselves gives, can you execute that with a voice generation? I think it's possible. I think it's only a matter of time, but the question is gonna be, will Crunchyroll and whatnot want to utilize that technology to dub things in English and be satisfying to the fans? Let me be perfectly clear. I think it's going to be a very, very bumpy road and it's going to take a long time for them to perfect it. I mean, getting the inflections and the unique voice of Aoyuki into a character is gonna be very difficult. That gruffiness in her throat that she has, that's very, a telling sign that it is Aoyuki. The thing that jumps out and grabs me to make me realize, oh, this character's Aoyuki, that stuff is gonna be very difficult to pull off. Her performance as Tanya, her performance as Clementine and Overlord, all the other roles that she's been in that I absolutely adore, it's gonna be unique and very difficult for them to pull off. Again, Kendra Suda and his very gruffy Yakuza type voice. I would love to hear that in English, but we'll see. I'd be curious to hear what you guys think in the comments down below. I'm sure plenty of people are gonna be like, you're a hypocrite because you're against AI generated animation, but you're okay with AI generation voice. <laughs> Again, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that I'm so, I've been burnt too much with subtitles and translations in the West. Again, too much of them putting their own humor and their own beliefs into the subtitles and changing the characters themselves. But again, I wanna hear from you guys. Additionally, if you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button so you got my content. I do news reviews, first impressions, top list if it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you wanna support the channel more, I have a Patreon link, a tips link, super thanks, a membership button down below. I greatly, greatly appreciate everybody that supports the channel. It's because of you guys that this happens and I'm able to keep doing what I'm doing. But I thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and y'all take care.